All right. Well, welcome back to this afternoon keynote program here at the 2022 Washington State of Reform Health Policy Conference. I appreciate you sticking around to be with us. We have a couple of things going on here. Of course, this was a holdover, like all of these sessions, from our aspirations for an in-person event. We wanted to start with a, a sort of an introductory and short session with Secretary of State Steve Hobbs, and we will do that and then follow that with a uh, a roundtable conversation with some of the smartest, most well-respected people in Washington State Healthcare, and we'll still do that. We've got a couple of uh, tech challenges in this new space to manage, but without further ado, we'll see if we can hide those from you. Uh, I want to introduce and bring to the to the metaphorical stage the Secretary of State of Washington, Steve Hobbs. Mr. Secretary, thanks for making time to be with us. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, DJ. I really appreciate this, and uh, I appreciate everything that you've done and uh, Washington State policy, you, you've actually developed quite a bit. Uh, people come up with ideas out of here and they, they push them on to Olympia, but uh, it's great to be the Secretary of State. And I think based upon the redistricting maps, it's probably a good thing I'm Secretary of State because I don't think I'd survive in the new redrawn district. Well, you, uh, you have survived a number of challenges as a Senator in the 44th Legislative District up in Snohomish County and just got appointed six weeks ago, right, to Secretary of State. How, how has that been going so far? Well, I really love it. Secretary Kim Wyman did an excellent job with, with the office and uh, taking over. She's left me a great team. I made a couple of changes because people, you know, just they want to leave and, and move on. But the three main priorities that I'm going to be bringing to the office and moving forward is increasing cybersecurity, uh, increasing voter outreach. There's a lot of communities out there that uh, – need to get registered to vote and know that their vote counts. And then number one, and we've seen it across the country, is combating disinformation and misinformation against uh, our elections. Uh, it's, uh, it's tragic. It's, you saw what happened January 6th of last year. And so what we're trying to do is combat that dis disinformation and misinformation that comes from not just inside, but from overseas as well, from enemies uh, against our country. You actually have, a, I think, a non-traditional but a real, pretty appropriate background for this uh, position, uh, given some of your national security work and experience. Give, give us your biography for folks that don't know about some of the work that you've done outside of elective office. Uh, give us some of that background. Uh, certainly. So with the, um, with the fact that elections across the United States are under attack, um, my my experience probably best fits for this this position. So um, I've been, I have a total of 33 years of military experience, a uh, good portion of that being in military intelligence. I worked for the National Security Agency at, at one point and uh, being a military officer, Lieutenant Colonel, graduating from the Command and General Staff College and being educated in, in, um, in those areas of national security and just a recent graduate of the Def uh, Department of Defense Information School. So Really, uh, this is the unfortunate, actually kind of unfortunate that we have to have national security specialists in the role of Secretary of State to protect our own elections, but that's just the way it is uh, because of the vulnerabilities or perceived vulnerabilities from outsiders to try to undermine our election system. During some of that time in the National Guard, I know you had a very active role in uh, supporting the COVID response here in Washington State. Walk us through what you were working on in, in that capacity. Yeah, th uh, thanks a lot. So it was in, you know, what, boy, what, almost two years ago, right? So when COVID popped up, I received a notification from the National Guard saying, hey, we just need you to be put on orders for 30 days. That's all we're going to do. This will all blow over uh, because people will do the right thing, of course. And uh, so we start out with a small task force of about 150 people, my my task was to do co conduct COVID support operations in Western Washington, which at the time included moving respirators and beds and maintaining the uh, food banks, which by the way, one thing we didn't realize, COVID, very vulnerable to senior citizens, and most of those food banks ran by senior citizens. And so we, we um, stepped up and ran the COVID operations. And DJ, I did not know that it was going to last for so long. And the next thing you know, I went from 400 or 100 to 200 to 400 to 750 soldiers and airmen under my command to conduct uh, COVID operations in Western Washington. Yeah. It's, uh, it's quite a lift. How would you say, you know, 
how would you say the politics of, of this time have changed in 2022? And I, I, I ask that because you've got a, a background as a, a moderate and a centrist and uh, somebody who, uh, you know, will, will fight the fight for issues that you believe in related, you know, when they are um, maybe a little more middle of the road than someone on the left or the right might want. So how is this time politically different from other points in your career? Right. It is absolutely tough, man. You can do like a, an hour long conversation about that, but it's, it's just divisive. Um, and you have a, you have a problem and where news sources have become politicized. So back in the day, I, I can look at all the faces here and, you know, you and I are old enough where there was only three news networks, right? And the, those news networks, you watched them because whoever was the most truthful put up the, the news um, uh, the soonest. But now it's about which news agency do I like that fits my political ideology? And unfortunately, that's kind of where people have gone. And that has caused greater divisions in our country. And of course, with COVID going on at the same time and uh, what happened with George Floyd, we've got the right wing really riled up and, and, and then riling up the left wing and Unfortunately, being a moderate is just a dangerous place to be in this country, whether you're a Democrat or Republican. Look at the, the purging going on by the Republicans against their own people like uh, Liz Cheney. So, yes, it's, it's tough, tough out there. And you are in the unique position of running uh, in 2022 for a statewide office. Not uh, most of our all of our statewide offices normally run on uh, presidential years, but because of your appointment, you are uh, uh, running this year to complete the four-year term to which Kim Wyman was elected. How does campaigning change these days in terms of, um, you know, not just your, your race, but all campaigning? It used to be that there was a bunch of direct mail and maybe some, some TV ads, but, you know, it's, it's different these days. How does that change and, and what insights can you share now that you've got this elections office? Right. I think a lot of it is shifted, and as you probably know, digital. So a lot of digital ads on, on social media. I don't think it changes in doing uh, TV and radio. I think that that doesn't change, but we'll have to make them more targeted um, so that the message is, is done correctly. If you're whatever campaign you're doing, and for me, statewide, it'll be, it'll be tough, right? So I also got to travel around the state. I've done it before when I ran for lieutenant governor. I'm hoping that this COVID will start, uh, the, the curve will bend. So everyone do the right thing, get vaccinated, wear masks so we can get through this. Because uh, one thing you do on these statewide campaigns, you do these little coffees and chats and go to the Rotary clubs and Kiwanis clubs across the state. And I hope I can do that again. Well, best of luck to you in your position and uh, serving as Secretary of State. I appreciate you making time to come on. I, I know you got a lot of demands on your time. So, Mr. Secretary, thank you very much for being here. Appreciate it.